So let's get to understanding Rosh Hashanah. Why is it a day that's full of happiness and sadness at the same time? What are we trying to make over here? What are we trying to accomplish? So to appreciate this, we're going to go back to day one. Day one of the story of life and mankind is the day we were created, our birthday, as we just explained. And let's appreciate. When God created the world and created Adam and Eve, essentially created mankind, it wasn't the way we see it today. Because today, death is a part of our reality. You know, there are two things you can't escape, like the famous saying, you know, death and taxes, right? Everyone has, has a date there that, is, that he's going to expire. We, we can't live forever. We're going to die. Everyone is going to die. And, and in truth, you should know, we are dying today. Because every step we take, I'm so tempted to every move we make, <laughs> you know, certainly God is watching us, but we are taking a step closer to our end, which means every day the life we use is, is, is either a moment we use to live or die. Right? If we've used the life I've been given today, if I've used my life today for positive things, then I could say I've lived today. But if I waste it, then it's a, it's a day that I'm just coming closer to my death. So we are dying every day. So, so we can't escape that. Where did this come from? So the truth is that when God created Adam and Eve, they were created to live forever. The real gift of life from, from God, the creator, God is infinite, God is perfect, and God is eternal. And he, he shared an unbelievable thing with, with mankind. He created us in the divine image. He created us to be like him, really be like him on some level. And he gave us life like the life he created, like, like the, the, the ultimate life he could create, which is an eternal, a forever life. So imagine, Adam and Eve were created to live forever. No death. Right? That's an amazing thing. That is definitely cause to celebrate, cause to be happy. And that's why Rosh Hashanah is a happy day, an unbelievable, awesome day, because it's the day that God gave us the ultimate gift of life, the, the, the infinite love that he has for his children, and said, I, I'm making you, and it's not a, a conditional. It's, it's, it's you live forever. It's not part, a part, a part time. It's, it's forever. Yet, 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 at the same time, he gave us responsibilities that we have a part in, meaning the, the creation and us being here isn't just a party, it's a production. And in the sense that we are here to co-produce a world and a reality together with God, so there's responsibility and accountability that comes with this unbelievable gift of life that we're supposed to use to create life, to for life, not for a waste, not for death. And when Adam and Eve sinned on that first day, so they introduced the concept of death to the world. The punishment of their first sin was a very harsh punishment, death. And now this day, this happy birthday, becomes a combination of a happy birthday but a happy funeral day. It's a day that we die. Now God was ultimately merciful with Adam and Eve and extended their punishment of death for many, many, many years, meaning they were judged and the verdict was death, but God brought mercy into his judgment and said, I'm not going to take your lives away now. I'm going to let you live. And they lived a very long time. Adam was destined to live a thousand years. He gave 70 of those years to King David, who had no years to live. Unbelievable story in and of itself that King David, one of the greatest people that were ever created and ever lived in this world, that, that talked with God, sung to God, cried to God. Unbelievable. We, 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 we live through his words. We, we are strengthened by his words of Tehillim, of Psalms. He was actually not given a moment to live. And, and Adam, perceiving the future, saw that he would, this beautiful, perfect soul, had no, not even a moment to live. He gave him seven years of his life and regretted it. Yeah. Yeah. And regretted it. Because life is precious. And even a moment, no one wants to give up. Anyway, so, so and then Adam lived 900 and, uh, 907 and 30 years. So, so God was merciful in the judgment, but nonetheless, Rosh Hashanah became a day where we have to be aware of death, accountability, you know, and we may not merit. And so that day of judgment is a reoccurring spiritual reality that happens year after year, and that's why we, we celebrate Rosh Hashanah. It's happy because it represents 
this unbelievable love, this, 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 this essential love that God has for us as his children, and it's an infinite love, infinite love. And it rep it's represented in the fact that he gave us a forever life, to be with him forever. Yet, because this life has reasons and, pur and a purpose that we have to also tap into and be aware of, and when we failed and went off course, so the result was that Hashem said, so now you can't live forever. Right now you can't live forever. And therefore there's death. Now let's appreciate. Is death a punishment? Is, is death God getting even with us? Is, is death God saying, you know, after, after I was so kind and loving and I gave you this perfect world and a an eternal life, you betrayed me, and therefore, I'm going to kill you? That's, that's not what death is at all. In reality, death is also a kindness of God. It's also an expression of God's love, just a bit of a harsh, harsher expression of that love. What death really is, is God saying, you've messed up, and in doing so, you've kind of messed yourselves up. And if I allow you to live forever in this messed up state, then things will just be messed up. So we're going to have to fix things. And since I'm ever loving and ever patient, we, even, if, even if this is going to be a long process, I'm with you till the end. And therefore, you're going to have to go through a process called death, which is a process of rectification. This is the process of fixing the blemish that sin caused. And so it's what we call tough love, not hate, God forbid. There's no such thing as hate. And so the reason we die is really also for our benefit. And we'll conclude with just a, a bit more of an elaboration on the fact that death is also part of Hashem's love, which is hard to embrace. Death is the hardest thing to deal with, the loss of, of loved ones. I'm not belittling anything. This is hard, but ultimately it's for our own good. And Alpi Kabbalah, the Ramchal, explains in his farm that really if we would live forever with the blemish that we attained from that first sin and, and subsequent sins, it would be a disservice to us. And the soul has to go through its process of rectification, and the body as well, because ultimately, it, when Mashiach comes and we live forever, it's going to be with the body together with the soul. So both the soul needs to be fixed and the body needs to be fixed. And again, this is going to leave us with some more questions and some learning to do, but the short answer is that the way for our soul, I'm sorry, the way for our body to be rectified is through the process of death and decay because then when we will merit the resurrection of the dead, then that body will be a body suitable to live together with the soul forever. <clears throat>